So Contact 5, like all the previous versions, can run in multi-timbral mode. And what this means is that with one instance of Contact, you can load several instruments within each responding on their own MIDI channel. Okay, so I'm gonna cover that now in this video. We're in Logic Pro 10. And first thing we need to do is to load up the instrument in a multi-timbral capacity. Now, eight parts means we can have separately eight instruments on their own individual MIDI channels. That sounds fine to me. This is nothing to do with the audio outputs, all right? That's very important to consider. So I've got here a selection of MIDI tracks. There are eight of these. If we open up the inspector on the left-hand side, you can see it says MIDI channel one for the first track, MIDI channel two for the second, three, and so on, all right? So it's very important to understand. Separate MIDI tracks, we're gonna load up on the first one, the instrument and we're going to drop down contact so here we go so native instruments and you need to consider how many outputs you want this is for mixing into the logic mixer so we're going to select here 16 stereo that's the biggest amount that we can get out of here and it's going to work really nicely so individually 16 stereo so that could be 16 individual midi tracks 16 individual instruments if we set it up that way but i started off for eight okay so first thing is midi tracks that's transmitting the data and then the actual outputs is the audio signal. Very important to understand the difference between the two. So I'm gonna set up a little demo. I'm gonna to go to file, I'm gonna go new instrument from the list. Now, if you remember my previous video about contact, we were talking about setting up the quick load. If you haven't seen that, watch it. You're gonna get all of these nicely populated menus here. Let me start off with some beats on the first MIDI channel. Um, what have we got? Okay, there's some kits here. So these performances, I'm gonna randomly dive in. I'm gonna close my eyes. Right, okay, here we go. Um, let's see what we got. I've got my MIDI keyboard set up. Okay, look, let me just go with that, just for speed. I'm gonna set up a couple of bars up here and uh, let's see what happens. Needs a bit of quantizing, let's take a look at the data um, you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna whack it on 16s and um, just swing it out a bit so something like that is probably all right I'm gonna leave it there I'm just gonna rename this MIDI one instrument one because I really want you to focus on this and understand what's going on MIDI one instrument one so this is related to contact and the rack that we've got over here and uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this down because I know I'm gonna stick my video, video window up there. Um, let's minimize this. And that's the first instrument. First MIDI track, first instrument. I haven't even configured any outputs just yet. All right, so we're gonna do another instrument and we're gonna do another one from the list. And uh, what I'm gonna do is maybe get something on the go, something a little bit different. I'm gonna in fact go to the same section. We're gonna go and get like, uh, what we got for percussion? I'll tell you what, let's load up one of these guys. Let's see what happens. And uh, I'm on the wrong track. It's good for you to see that. We come down to the second track. Okay, yeah, do you know what? That could be quite good. I'm gonna vibe on this. Let me just set this up. MIDI two, instrument two, all right. Okay, well, let me see what happens. I might just do those two, all right, just for speed. Here we go. That's cool. Got a little bit of a doubled up one over here. Do you know what, I'm gonna keep that high note, I quite like that. Let's just get all these quantized up, and a bit of swing on there. So, We've got separate MIDI tracks, all right? So you can see here on contact, this is now on MIDI channel two. That's coming up automatically. So the next one we load will go to the next free MIDI channel. If you need to change this, you can just drop it down. So you've got here for each port, there is 16, and you can drop down and choose, all right? So look, that's fine. I'm gonna minimize that. Let me get something different. So look, literally, as I said, this is a rack. You've got MIDI channels corresponding to each of these instruments. You've got that occurring here in the rack. 
So the first instrument, MIDI channel one, second instrument, MIDI channel two, this corresponds to the tracks over here. Nothing to do with the audio output. This is all about the programming data. So let's get something different. Um, let's load this up, new instrument from list. Uh, what do we got? Let's get something a little bit different. Um, vintage synths, retro machines. What do we got? Analog machines. Um, okay, let's try one of these sub basses. Let's have a listen. Let me get my other earbud in and uh, take a look. Remember, we're on the MIDI channel three. Let me just uh, come over here and set this up again. MIDI three instrument three. So I want this to be really clear. You know, I'm going over this so much. It's funny. There's a sub. Just gonna have a listen. Um, that's not my favorite sound. I'm gonna go to the next instrument in the list. Let me try the octave up. Okay, look, that, I'm rolling with that. So the advantage of the quick load, you know, like I said on my previous video, is that we can go next and previous here. For composition, it's great. You can just try something out. If it doesn't work, move to the next one. Keep the momentum going. That's really important. All right, here we go. Okay, timing was a little bit out again. So once again, let's just fix it up. Um, gonna get our length out a bit over here. Yeah, wicked. All right. So look, this is a concept. You can see I get one more element in. I don't know what I'm gonna use. So we set up a new instrument. Let me minimize this down. So we're gonna go to file new instrument from list. Um, what am I feeling like doing? Let me check out another analog. Whoa, I didn't mean to do that. So look, this is great about the quick load. I've just loaded up an empty instrument with nothing in it. So I can actually go to the quick load menu from the instrument, which is really, really good. Um, so vintage synths, retro machines. Um, what do I wanna go for here? Maybe a piano, this could be interesting, like a kind of synth uh, piano. <laughs> Oh, that sounds terrible. <laughs> I mean, you know, these are not designed to be real pianos. That's quite interesting. Do you know what? I'm going to get that in so that we can see something else added to the list. So. Here we go. Once again, quantizing. Yeah, wicked. This is shaping up nicely, actually. So it just shows you how having your quick load set up and running in multi timbre, it means you can get your ideas up and running really quickly. The advantage also is you can save the combined collection of instruments as a multi. That's another term in contact. So um, let me just finally get this uh, set up MIDI for instrument for. So that's a concept, All right? That MIDI multi timbrality sorted out. We've got an additional eight here. We could have chose more at the very beginning, but there was no need. In fact, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna clear these. It's nice and simple, it's all set up. So let's take a look at the outputs. Configuring the outputs is important if you wanna get your mix sorted out. So the individual level of detail, so being able to EQ, compress, affect the individual elements in your composition. So as I said before, at the moment, this is all based on MIDI. So the individual tracks that we can see here are just the programming data to tell those instruments what notes to play, how long, etc. So we want to deal with the outputs. Now the instrument itself is over here. 
you know that I loaded up a multi-output instance, which was 16 stereo outputs, which means now in my mixer I could have, and I just pushed X to get the mixer up. You see the plus sign here. I'm gonna name this contact. And this is stereo one, essentially. That's the first output. If we click on the plus, it's gonna add new stereo outputs. Now I've got four instruments set up here. So I'm gonna say here, I'm gonna rename this actually. I'm gonna do KST1. This is gonna be KST2, KST3, and KST4. So four stereo outputs, all right? We need to set this up inside contact, all right? So let's just come over here. Let's open it up. Let's open these so we can see inside the instrument. So can you see here the output? I'm gonna drop this down and you can see here that we've got at the moment only a small selection of outputs. I need to actually configure contact now so that it can make the most of the 16 stereo outputs in Logic. All right, so what we need to do is to go to the outputs. You click on here and you can see all this over here. This is showing you the available outputs. And this has varied in complexity over the years. I've I had some previous videos where I've gone into great detail about this, but it's actually a lot easier now. So if I say here presets, drop it down and you can see here, you've got different selections. And what we need to do is just come down to the batch functions, which are really, really helpful. Honestly, it used to take such a long time. So I'm trying to read this. It's really hard because I've got this resolution expander for my 13 inch MacBook Pro and with 720p videos, I can see everything clear, but 1080, I can hardly read it. So clear output section and create one individual channel for each loaded instrument. This is what we want, all right? This is great. It's a little batch function. So I'm gonna click on this. And it's just gonna run through it. And you can see here now that we've got individual elements on their own stereo outputs. So when I push play in the mixer, you've got all of these individual instruments. I mean, it's so, so good to be able to do this. Right, I'm gonna solo the first. There's the drums, percussion, sub bass, and then the chords. So listen, I just need to recap, all right? So these are MIDI tracks. One, two, three, and four, all right? The instrument numbers correspond to the instruments in the contact rack, okay? With the same instance, a single instance of contact. Now down here in the mixer, we're dealing with the stereo outputs of contact. Let me just show you inside contact. If you have your instruments loaded, I'm gonna take this away now. You can drop down your output and you can see here, you've got the different options for the routing. You could route to another separate output. All right, so let me just take this so we can see the next one. Let's open this up. This is MIDI channel two, output two. All right, so you can see that here. So that's three and four, stereo, left and right. Okay, that's the way it works. So three is for the left, four is for the right. So this is so flexible, it's very easy. Once you've set up those outputs, by the way, um, sorry, that's not options. Uh, sorry, that is options, it's not outputs. I told you I can't see what's going on. Once you've set up the outputs, you can save these as defaults, all right? So save current section as default for all of these. Really flexible, once you've found your setup you like, maybe you just wanna stick with sticks, uh, maybe you wanna stick with 16 stereo outs. By the way, I was out drinking last night, you can hear that in my voice. Um, so, and it's quite early. So anyway, look, basically contact, multi, uh, multi output, multi timbral. This is the really, really flexible way of doing it. All right. So, um, yeah, make the most of it. Seriously. It's really efficient to load up a single instance. You can do lots of different individually loaded contacts with one instrument, but it's really wasting resources, you know? So um, this is great. You've got the flexibility for working with it on the individual outputs. You can use all the automation on those individual outputs if you wanted to as well. So that's it, multi-timbral contact Logic Pro 10.